Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Thank you so much for tuning in and today on the channel we are going to be featuring a team revolving around Bravery, the Galarian Dalmanitan, Shinotic, Whimsicott, Drekovish and Snorlax. So uh, this team kind of took inspiration from a, a team that I played on the ladder actually. Uh, I'll just pull it up now. It's from a player going under the username Silver Thorn. So whoever that is, because I don't know, it's probably an alt. Um, big shout out to them for giving inspiration for this team. It was something that I liked and I think it, it brings together a few Pokemon that are maybe a little bit forgotten about in this format. Um, the bravery obviously is very good it's kind of having spots here and there in, in top usage on the ladder at the minute so still a very good and relevant pokemon good at setting the um the speed control with its, its max airstream or tailwind if you want and then obviously dormanitan another one that's kind of here or there uh very powerful obviously we've got the choice golf on it gives you a nice pivot option if you need it uh the shinotic is something i've loved from the the get-go in this format it's one of the only pokemon that can get spore and um, so really cool pokemon um, really good for anti-trick room as well uh, with that low base 30 speed stat uh, then whimsicott it's a little slightly different than your your standard whimsicott actually implying and um, like employing the use of encore once again and that is something i think super forgotten about in this format you know you can't encore a dynamax pokemon but they only last three turns so you can still make use out of those encore turns and locking your opponent into positions where they're kind of pinned and you can get a bit of m momentum from there then we've got the uh, the Dracovish, Mr. Fish, um, a very powerful Pokemon in its own right. We've got the Mystic Water on there, Protect, and uh, kind of a standard set. Uh, all you need is the Ficious Rend, of course, and then the Snorlax running out the team. But we went for an Assault Vest variant in this team with the Thick Fat, just making a special kind of defense a little bit better on the team. Um, so... What we're going to do is just jump into it. As always, there will be a rental team at the end of the episode. Um, the Snorlax as well is something that helps against uh, Trick Room, of course, because we went for a slower variant here. Uh, you could always go for a faster variant if you wanted, but uh, you get a little bit more bulk in Snorlax if you go without the speed investment. Um, so we'll just hop on and find our first opponent of the episode, which is kindly popped up at the right time so we've got chq hopefully we have some good battles with this team today um they are playing a team of rotom wash excadrill hitmontop togekiss the hatterene and the bravery so um i guess they've got a trick room mode maybe with the hat but that seems to be the only mode that they've got there uh they've got decent speed control options with the togekiss and the bravery both can max and max airstream um, but they both have to be pretty scared of Dalmanitan. Him on top, obviously, with the fake out does cause us a few issues um, here. So that's something that we have to watch out for. Excadrill, obviously, another candidate, along with that Rotom to Dynamax. So lots of potential Dynamax Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field. Um, Hat's going to be difficult for us to deal with, for sure. But um, I think I'm going to lead Brave. Bird. Um... Do we just got Bravery Dalmanitan? It kind of draws away the attention at my opponent. I think we want Dalmanitan, especially just for chipping things at the end of the match. Um, it's what we want to go with outside of that. Now, we could go Shinotic and Snorlax. Um, I think that's not a bad idea, you know. We're not going to be relying on our speed control too much. Um, but our sheer bulk and disruption with Shinotic, um, especially with the Spore, could come in really handy um, for just stopping things. Obviously, we can't Spore the, the Hat. Uh, we have to be quite conscious of that uh, because of the Magic Bounce there. But we can Spore pretty much anything else. And against the Excadrill, we've got the, the Bibbery Berry, so we should be alright against that Pokemon. Um, and uh, the nice thing about leading our bird into the Hitmontop is the Intimidate's going to give us that instant attack boost with our Defiant ability, which is super nice. Um, I'm kind of tempted to just max Airstream straight into the, the, the Bravery, to be honest. Um, the other option is here, we could potentially bring in Snorlax um, because I think if you're hit on top you have to fake out Darmanitan right 
Um, and we should be able to get rid of the bird in a couple of turns. Yeah, let's um, right. Let's make sure that we are max airstreaming into the bird, and let's not leave Darmanitan as kind of fodder on the field because I'd imagine the fake out and uh, max airstream into that slot. Although you might want to just fake out the Darmanitan and then get some damage onto our big bird because then at least it's a bit easier to take down the following turns. But we'll see what happens. We are going for the max here. We might just see a Tailwind from my opponent as well. Um, that's definitely an option for them. Because, they sh like, depending on the speed tiers here, they, they may be able to get the Tailwind off prior to us going for the max. And there's the fake out from the hit on top. Um, tailwind, yeah, that makes more sense, I guess. And then they can max the next turn. But they're probably going to go down now to this attack. Yeah, so they lose their bird, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, now the next turn, obviously Snorlax has got the speed boost here, but it's not really something that relies on the speed boost, especially in these, these situations. Um, so we, you know that the Hitmontop's likely to go for a close combat into that slot, um, and it probably does in the Tailwind at speed our bravery. So we want to kind of preserve Snorlax the best we can here and maybe bring in Shinotic. Uh, now, do we go for the Max Knuckle into the Excadrill? It makes the most sense. So we could go for another Max Airstream. It's tricky because if... Um, okay, I know. I think we go for Max Knuckle. We get some... Um, it's hard because if it is weakness policy, then we will proc that. And that's the one thing we don't want to do. Whereas we could get rid of the Hitmontop now. <laughs> And just switch straight into Shinotic. I think that's probably a better idea. And try and keep speed with my opponent. Um, because you think that Tailwind is not going to last forever. If we can get some speed onto the field. That would be better for us I think. And the fact that I just don't want to proc a weakness policy. On my opponent's side. Is the big the big catch here. But if we can put the Echo Drill to sleep. That would be ideal. Depends how much damage uh, Shinotic takes this turn. Imagine a mo max rockfall coming out from the, the Excadrill. Yeah, into our bird. But we should take this. I mean, it's going to do decent damage, of course, but... Not ideal. Not ideal. But... Not the worst. Not the worst. Are we actually at speed? The game on top. So, we could have kept in our Snorlax. Okay, okay, well, you know, you never know sometimes. It's better safe than sorry um, in these situations because sometimes, like, Hitmontop can run a bit more speed investment. It does make a little more sense sometimes. Uh, Shinotic, we've got on the field now, and it is pressuring with this ball. Should take a max steel spike, depending on the build. Like, there is no life orb on that extra build, so we should take that. But, yeah, the, the Toga Kiss inclusion here makes things a little bit more tricky um, for us, definitely, to to deal with um, especially because we could get doubled up into um, hmm. see I could see steel spike and uh, right well we'll max guard and do we want to switch here I mean we got Dalmanitan still so we're, we're still fine do we want to it's whether or not we want to protect here because I think they've got yeah they got two turns of tailwind left um, I think it's probably better here going for maybe the spore into the Excadrill rather than just double protecting. Yeah, let's do that. If you can put the Excadrill to sleep, this makes this game so much easier for us. So I feel like it's worth the risk at this point. Ooh, Togek is gone for the protect. Oh, what's gonna happen? Max Rockfall. Oh, <laughs> oh Shinotic pulling out all the stops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's perfect for us. Literally perfect. Um, so the Excadrill is now going to spend its last turn of Dynamax asleep, which is ideal. It's not going to make the most of it. It's got none of those defensive boosts uh, that we kind of worry about otherwise. Um, so we can, I mean, yeah, the Dalmanitan. Do we just double attack into... 
I think we just double. Uh, no, I think we go for Brave Bird and um, we could go for Straps. Straps Rounds. So we could just go for a Spore into the Toga Kiss. I think, yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just draw it out a little bit. So there's the Exegrill staying asleep. Um, obviously, the last turn of Tailwind as well, that helps us out massively. We'll probably lose our bird here. But that damage is definitely worth it. Because it doesn't gleam. Ooh, a Heat Wave. Ah. This will not take Chanel Tick out. Unless we've got a crit there, which is highly likely, but it's fine. Um, and we've got Sap Strength on Shinotic, so this is nice. We're, we're getting to see a little bit of Shinotic here, which is always good. And um, we can now just Sap Strength and Superpower the, um, the Excadrill, which should be enough to take it down. Uh, and we also break a Sash here as well, which is the, the big thing, the close combat. Now the Excadrill could wake up and it could be on its Sash, which could be a little bit tricky. Um, so I think Energy Ball, just double it. Sense stra strength Sap isn't worth it uh, because it could become problematic if it does wake up. That's the only thing. Now we should outspeed it with our bird, of course, the close combat here. It is sashed. Like, it makes more sense. Okay. But it hasn't got the weakness policy in that case, so that's that's super good for us. Um. And if it stays asleep, which it does, then the energy ball will pick up the knockout and uh, our bird should be able to potentially close this one out the next turn if it sticks around through the sand damage here. Yeah, we should do. Yeah, just about. And uh, Big Bird. Has Big Bird picked up every KO in this match? Has it? We've got the bravery. We've got the hit on top. We've just got the Excadrill. Let's go for this. St side Strength Zap. If the Togekiss wakes up... Nah, it's not gonna protect. Because then we just boost the Defiant as well, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we get a really clean uh, victory for us to kick off with today. Uh, and the bird did all the work. Um, which is ideal, because like, Bravery is an amazing Pokemon. Uh, it's something that I haven't used personally enough. And whenever I do use it, I'm always really surprised by how good it like performs it's bulky it's a great speed set um and it's got that nice immunity to ghost types as well so um just just generally a good pokemon um okay well we're pulling up my opponent's team i guess so let's have a quick pick through and we were pretty lucky then uh, that it didn't get the crit with the, the heat wave there because it has got the scope lens and the super luck salt fest hat hmm, that's interesting not something that you see too often is G-Max as well. Um, and then their bird with the rock slide there. So, um, like I say, I think Rotom would have been a bit problematic for us. But, I mean, we, we got around it all right. And we did have Shinotic, who was so disruptive in that match and a really nice Pokemon. So, we'll continue on. And uh, we'll climb a little higher up this ladder and we'll try and find our next opponent and see if we can climb even higher so let's see but uh yeah these kind of teams uh when you look at them on paper it's like wow okay um where's a ground type user where's where's this where's x where's y and it just feels like it doesn't make a lot of sense but then when you see it in battle because of the pressure that's putting on from both sides of your field it just works with the kind of glue that you've got with the snorlax and uh, Shinotic that can really disrupt now here's a, a a game ideal for Shinotic really because we've got our next opponent playing G-Max Lapras which you would assume the Dusclops Conkledur that's a kind of standard call there the Alchemy as well uh, causes a lot of problems for our team especially if we can start decorating uh, the opposing Pokemon well the partnering Pokemon next to it and then Arcanine and Tito making up the call so um, pretty scary We've got to think of ways to get around this. The best ways to get around this, I think. Um, maybe this one's one that we could potentially bring Whimsicott to. Um, because the Encore is pretty nice here. But then again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tempted just to go Bird Darm again. Um, with Snorlax Shinotic in the back in case the Trick Room gets set up. I think we'll go with that. 
The only thing, the other thing to consider is maybe Dracovish, which could be decent here, but it, it's a Lapras, it does, does struggle a little bit. We'll lock in with what we've got from that first game again, um, and we'll see what we can do. But what I'm kind of feeling as well, and what you probably, you'll experience if you try the rental cord out is, I think it's gonna take a little while to get used to really optimizing the team in your, your personal play and how, how it plays. Because um, this is literally the first time I'm coming in to play the team. Um, and obviously a lot of the mods do make sense. Um, so they're quite self-explanatory, but at the same time, it's um it is a little bit tricky to um to always feel like you you're making the right choices every time um okay so i mean we could double the lapras yeah i don't know if we're going to be able to get it with the yeah i mean we could max airstream and then superpower or we could rock slide or we could get rid of the alchemy it's probably better to get rid of the alchemy, honestly. But if they protect the alchemy and just go for the G Max resonance, we are knackered straight away, uh, and it's going to be very difficult for us to come back. So let's see what my opponent does now. The, the, our bravery should outspeed the alchemy, um, and Dalmanitan 100% does. So. Now the nice thing here is the thick fat Snorlax that we've got in the back of the Assault Vest just deals with Lapras super well. So we are going to see the Lapras obviously make its appearance. I don't think it's going to be G-Max Cake. Could be wrong. No. <laughs> kind of hoping there for a minute it was going to be the Cake, but it is the Lapras. We just need to stop the Decorate. Um, and Alchemy known for carrying the Focus Sash. That's the big target here. For me at least right now. Um, yeah, and um, we don't see a protect, so that's ideal. And we get our airstream off as well, giving us a speed boost. Now, we're going to have to contend with uh, the Aurora Veil, but I think that's something you have to contend with going up against Lapras, regardless, really. You know, it's going to normally, these teams are built so that the Lapras can get G Max Resonance off. So, it's just something we're going to have to. Yeah, I mean, it's, look at that damage. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and because Lapras is just so bulky anyway, and this is what makes it such a good G-Max Pokemon, really. Right. Well, the Lapras is set up. What are we going to see? Let's see the trick room. This is ideal. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Because I think now we get a clear switch into something like Shinotic with our Darmanitan, because I can't see my opponent going for an ice type attack into that slot we could pull a double switch um but i would like to get at least one turn of my like the final dynamax turn attack off with a bird so let's see if shinotic can steal the show once again i feel like it can do a good job The other thing with Shinotic is you could go Moonblast on it, but we've got the Moonblast on um, Whimsicott, so I've kind of opted to go for the grass coverage on Shinotic. We're seeing a max lightning. Uh, it's trying to stop any spore abuse, I guess, right now, and as the trick room set up, but it's a little bit too late because you're not going to get your terrain up now because we can spore you, and I'm just going to go for... Um, hmm. We'll just go for an airstream into Dusclops. I don't know if that's really gonna, like, we could go for the max knuckle, just get some damage off and get the speed boost into Lapras. Yeah, let's do that. I think the worst thing here would be the max garden and the trick room reversed again, but we're not gonna see that, that's fine. I think that would have been a play for my opponent. And we did get the spore off into the Lapras, so nighty night, Miss Lapras. And uh, we'll get the max knuckle off here and then potentially the next turn we can double up into the Lapras uh, with a close combat Oof, there's like nothing <laughs> like nothing um, and an energy ball which might might give us 
a bit of room to uh, to get it. The other option is we could put the Dusclops to sleep. So our Dynamax turn to end. The other option is we've got here, we could potentially switch into Snorlax now. Um, but there's a part of me that just wants to get this close combat, just make use of it and then switch it out the next turn. Um, yeah, let's just go for the double up into the Lapras. Hopefully Lapras doesn't wake up this turn. Oh, there's the haze coming out. Okay, well, that's good because we're not taking Nightshade damage, which is ideal. There's a fat energy ball. Fat. It does wake up. No. Not into Shinodic. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> okay, that is ideal. And we'll get rid of the Lapras, which is perfect. Um, okay. Poor Shinotic, though. It's going to go down to a Nightshade this next turn. Uh, but, 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 but. Depends what my opponent brings in, right? And now they're down to the last two Pokemon. If it is the Conk. Yeah. It's a big bad Conk. It's not good news for our, our Snorlax. It's not good news for anything really other than the bird. Um, okay. How many turns of Trick Room we've got left? Two? Yeah. Okay. We need to keep our bird uh, for Conk. Bring in Snorlax. Hope we don't see a drain punch there. I think that's what we're gonna see though. That's the problem. We could just protect, okay? Let's just protect our bird. And um we spawn. What do we send? Strength sap. We could strength sap this the conch here. Just to weaken its attack stat. I feel like we're gonna lose Shinotic though. But it does give us the opportunity to bring in something like Snorlax. Yeah. It's the only problem. Like the room service here would have been a really good item because then we under speed the Sclops and the punch. Okay, well we put that Snorlax in. Okay, well let's bring Snorlax in. Uh, the only problem here is that because we're going to be moving after my opponent. Um, I'm going to bring in Delmanitan, and I'm going to concentrate down on the Dusclops. Because we need to deny the next Trick Room. That's the big thing. Like, we need to get damage onto the Dusclops to deny it getting damage the next turn. I'm hoping the Conk... Okay, well, there's a play in Split. And that's fine. I'm hoping they concentrate down a little bit more on the bird, knowing that that's a big threat. Doesn't do enough. That's not ideal at all. Because uh, now the conch just protects. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, hmm. It's difficult now because I think we have to double tap into the the dust clops because it's just gonna go for the trick room. And I don't feel like we've got enough in the tank between our bird and our Snorlax to get rid of it. There's no way we're taking it out. No. No way. No way. And the conch has to protect here, I feel. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Yeah, Snorlax can't deal with the, the, the conch by itself, I don't feel. Unless we get, like, a cheeky... Wow, that does... This is why Dusclops is just nasty. Okay. Uh, unless we get a body sand paralysis onto the conch. Fully paralyzed. And then we can get another body. I think two body slams would probably get... Mm, no, it won't. We probably need three, because the conch got good defense. So... As a pain split again. Get all that health back. Right, we need the paralysis here. Yeah, we need three. Okay, well there's there's where's one? Can we get a double protect? That's the big thing. That would be huge for us, right? They're probably gonna drain punch now. 
Ah, uh, we don't get it. We don't get it. Well, the nightshade doesn't do anything, so that's fine. Um, it's the drain punch is going to be a problem if they went. Ooh, 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 ooh! Could we get the fully? Ah, okay. I think you needed to drain punch there, to be honest, because I think um, like you've got to make a play now. I think if you're my opponent, you've got to reverse the trick room. You've got to reverse the trick room, otherwise you just lose. I think you had to drain punch there. If they're fully paralyzed and they go for the protect though, then we win this match. So Snorlax can still eke this out. It is! <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, the RNG gods. How you've got to love them. Okay, that's perfect. They were making the play. I mean, I feel bad for my opponent because they were making the correct play. Dusclops has no way to damage us now except Pain Split, which is not really going to be something you can KO us with. So uh, we can just Heavy Slam, High Horsepower, all those shenanigans. But this is why Body Slam is sometimes a good a good option and my opponent just cancels the battle. Got to feel bad for my opponent because they if they get that play off, then they just win the match outright. So they made all the right players there. Uh, it was a little bit difficult for us. It would have been nicer if our Chanel ticket lasted a little bit longer. Um, or maybe had that room service option because then under speeding the dust clubs, like we said in that match meant that we could shut it down and stop its its disruption which it it showed how good it is in that match so um i guess what we need to do is get the the rental team for you you guys so um if you do try it as always uh do let me know what your thoughts are on the team uh let me know how much fun you're having with it because like of everything, Shinotic is like the one Pokemon that I really do love. Like, obviously not the the main part of this team, but it's a it's a big Pokemon, and I think it's um it's a great Pokemon to play, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. And the pressure that you can put on Trick Room teams is is phenomenal. Um, so you know, I I've played variants with Expert Belt as well, so you can get the Energy Ball KO. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to make it public. And make it public for all of you fine people and then we will check it and then you guys can try it out for yourself and hopefully have a lot of fun but yeah Shinotic can do some stuff it can pick up a knockout on like your standard Dragapult obviously not those bulky ones but if you run a Moonblast uh, it can pick up so it's, it's a decent Pokemon it's underlooked it's definitely underlooked it's one of my favorite Pokemon um, so there's the team there's a the rental code Hope you enjoy it, my friends. We'll wrap up the episode there, and I will see you all very soon for another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. Do leave a like if you've enjoyed the episode. Subscribe to the channel for more of this stuff, Pokemon news, and other content on the channel. And uh, I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care, and bye-bye.